When I first got hurt, I remember laying in my bed while nurses inspected my naked body and put tubes and fingers in places where the sun don't shine. I had zero privacy and felt completely violated. As if having a spinal cord injury wasn't hard enough, now I'd have to do skin checks, cath, and have a bowel program, whatever the heck that is. At the time, I didn't know how important these things were for my longevity and my quality of life. So today, I'm gonna teach you how to manage your new body so you can live a long and fulfilling life with a spinal cord injury. When pressure sores, chronic infections, constipation, and other complications arise, it can put a massive damper on your life. Luckily, the key to managing all these problems is prevention. If you take normal protective measures, such as diet, exercise, and regular checkups, while monitoring your skin, bladder, and bowels, you're well on your way to living a long and healthy life while avoiding hospital stays, painful bed rest, and powerful medications that wreck your system. The tips in this video will help you avoid a whole host of secondary complications that plague the spinal cord injury community, such as respiratory diseases, urinary system diseases, heart diseases, obesity, and diabetes. I did hours and hours of research to get this video right because I know firsthand how important it is. If you get any value out of this video, please consider supporting us on Patreon or grabbing a piece of the temporary collection on shopwheelstowalking.com. The number one question I get from you guys is, Richard, what kind of workouts do you do? And the answer is complex. There are many well-documented benefits to exercising, such as increased lean muscle mass, enhanced metabolism, better circulation, and improved mood. I'm personally a huge fan of lifting weights at the gym, but that can be intimidating if you've never done that before. If you'd like me to make a video series about adaptive lifting, be sure to let me know in the comments. There are more ways to exercise than just lifting weights. You can go for long pushes in your wheelchair, swim, and even play wheelchair sports. That's a great way to surround yourself with other disabled people and learn from them directly in real life situations. I played a season of wheelchair softball and the time I got to spend with other teammates was priceless. As the old saying goes, you are what you eat. And if you make poor choices in the kitchen, it's probably a bigger factor than you think. Have a red spot or pressure sore on you that won't go away? It's probably because you're not eating enough nitrogen rich foods and lean proteins. Nitrogen is responsible for opening up blood vessels and sending nutrients to parts of the body that need healing. Have a UTI that's bothering you? Bacteria love sugar, and the more sugar you eat or drink, the harder it is to cure. I've been able to get rid of UTIs that come my way by reducing sugars, increasing water intake, cathing more often, and supplementing with the mannose, vitamin C, and cranberry pills. Haven't pooped in a few days or pooped three times a day? it's probably your fiber intake or your fat intake. I know this can be overwhelming, but don't worry. My friend at the SEINutritionist.com is a registered dietitian that offers nutrition coaching to clients with spinal cord injury. Be sure to sign up for a free discovery call today. This isn't going to be one of those videos where I try to scare you into caring for your skin by showing you pictures of what bad pressure sores can look like. But believe me when I say this is serious, and if not taken seriously, you can end up in bed for months or years at a time. A pressure sore is any redness or break in the skin caused by too much pressure for too long. The pressure prevents blood from getting into your skin, so the skin dies. Normally, your body sends signals to your brain to let you know that you need to change position, but damage to your spinal cord keeps these messages from reaching your brain. Skin inspection is essential and should become a habit. Make it a part of your regular daily routine. Whenever you notice a problem, try to figure out its cause and make immediate changes to prevent further problems. The first step in curing any skin problem is to eliminate the cause. Pressure releases in a wheelchair can be done by pushing straight up, leaning side to side, and bending forward over your knees. In bed, body parts can be padded with pillows to keep bony areas free of pressure. You can place a pillow between your knees while sleeping on your side to prevent skin-to-skin -skin contact between the legs. Being overweight can cause increased pressure on bony areas. Delayed healing may occur because there are fewer blood vessels and fat tissue. Proper fitting clothing is important. Avoid sitting on seams and back pockets, and always check your skin carefully after wearing new shoes or clothing. To learn more about properly fitted clothing, check out this video I did with my friend Danny. Intermittent catheterization, also known as IC, is when you empty your bladder several times a day by inserting a small plastic tube into your urethra. I like this method because it gives me the most confidence in my day-to-day -day life. Over the years, I've had several bladder augmentation surgeries done because I leak real bad. I've used Botox, which relaxes the bladder, allowing it to hold more. I've used Coaptite to bulk up the neck of the bladder to reduce the amount of leaking. But what I found worked the best was an addition of an implant called the AMS 800. 
I can't tell you how much that implant changed my life. No more leaks from transfers, picking stuff up off the ground, coughing, sneezing, or laughing. I started working out again, got a girlfriend, and wasn't afraid to laugh anymore. Because of your spinal cord injury and the fact that you must empty your bladder by cathing, you are more likely to get bacteria in your urine. The reason for this is that whenever a catheter is put into your body, it can pick up bacteria that is normally on the skin and push the bacteria into your bladder. Careful hand washing before each cathing is essential and will help prevent UTIs by decreasing the amount of bacteria on the skin. Avoid antibiotics if you can. Drink more water and cath more frequently. Supplement with D-mannose, vitamin C, and cranberry pills. If you have to take antibiotics, be aware that it can change the balance of good bacteria and bad bacteria in your body. I'd recommend taking a probiotic as a preventative measure against diarrhea. Only rarely should antibiotics be used to prevent the onset of infection, since it may lead to antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Unfortunately, I poop on myself. A lot. It's an ongoing battle. Each person's bowel program should be individualized to fit their own needs. I use the manual removal technique, which if your level of injury is below T12, this is probably the one you'll use too. I've found that if I do poop checks for every time I pee, it reduces the amount of accidents I have. If your level of injury is above T12, you'll probably use different techniques such as digital stimulation, suppositories, or mini enema. Most people perform their bowel program at the time of day that fits with their previous bowel habits and current lifestyle. Bowel programs vary from person to person, so I'm going to link some resources down below. What's most important is that you discover what works best for you. All this can be scary and overwhelming. I know I didn't want to be constantly worrying about my skin, putting plastic tubes inside my body, and sticking a finger in my butt. But over time, these things slowly started to melt away and become a part of my new normal. You deserve to live a long, happy, and healthy life with minimal complications. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and please consider supporting us on Patreon or grabbing some merch. I covered a lot today, so if I missed anything, leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.